You're about to enter a world of end. You're about to end. You're about to enter a world. <laughs> I'm not even gonna do the intro. Welcome to Weird Web Toy Week. Day, day, week two. N wrong. Every word was wrong. So, <clears throat> AI Dungeon is kind of like, um, um, Botnik is kind of a perfect example of what AI Dungeon is. Um, so this was done with a predictive text keyboard. Um, what's the problem with the minimalism? You know, if you enjoy being around alcoholics, I'm gonna go ahead and never return that dog. We cut to Jerry's apartment day. Um, Jerry and Elaine are carrying leaves in their hands. He tries to grab a door as she imitates the door. Uh, this is my favorite bit. Um, Jerry takes off his bones. Grandma, do you have a fun flashback to do? And then we cut to the cafe. As if this is Kramer having a flashback. And George is wearing a $20 hat that says hello to horse. I just want to point out Botnik sells the $20 hat that says hello to horse. Um, AI Dungeon is essentially that. Um, but there's no human. I'm the human. I give it words to work with and it responds. So if we play as a... Let's be a wizard. His name is Beanie. Because he's made of beans or something. I don't know. Um, Beanie the wizard. Uh, you are Beanie the wizard. A wizard living in the kingdom of Larion. You have a staff and a spell book. You finish your long journey and finally arrive at the ruin you've been looking for. You look around and see that it's not much different from when you left it years ago. The only thing is, there's a small group of people gathered here. They don't seem to be doing much except talking amongst themselves. Let's just introduce ourselves, you know? You walk up to them and say, Hello, my name. As if they were going to attack you. The man looks at you with his big round eyes and says, I haven't seen any signs of civilization for centuries. I thought we'd all forgotten about this place. But Beanie never forgets. <laughs> Th this is going to take a weird turn. You continue to speak as if nothing happened. The woman says, well, I guess you're right. She then turns her attention back to the group. The young boy continues to stare at you and then looks away from you. You continue to speak as if nothing happened. Nothing happened. Um, the girl says, we're just playing. She then looks over at the boy who has now turned his head away from you. He doesn't respond, so she continues speaking. What does she say? Just hit the, just hit the enter button and it continues. Um, I want to know what she needs. <clears throat> Um, you continue to speak as if nothing happened. The man says, yes, we play games. He then looks over at the girl, who then seems oblivious to him looking at her. She's, he speaks again, but he doesn't seem very interested in what you have to say anymore. Uh, what game are you playing? I want to know. I want to know more about this world. I want to know more about these people. What are the game they're playing? Beanie the Wizard has to know. I continue to speak as if nothing happened. Uh, the woman says, uh, none of our business, really. She then looks over at the boy, who hasn't moved an inch since you started speaking. Uh, she speaks again, but she sounds bored by what you have to say. Okay, uh, leave the group of players be and enter the ruin. You continue to speak as if nothing happened. I'm stuck. The man says, so, where do you want to go? And he turns his attention back towards you. Beanie wants to get out of this place. Beanie speaks in the third person. It's fine. You continue to speak as if nothing happened. I knew that was happening. Uh, no, I think we should stay here. She then turns her attention back towards the man. He responds by saying, yeah, we should stay here too. And then he then walks off into the ruins without another word. Do they live in the ruins? Are they exploring the ruins? Follow the man into the ruins. I need to know. You continue to speak as if nothing happened. Say it. it you know what you're about to say. It. Say the word. Yep. I'm sorry, but I can't let you leave. He then turns around and walks away without another word. A lot of these people are saying a lot of things and then not saying another word. I did say a lot more things. Okay. Um, hmm. Open the spell book and read. What does it say? You continue to speak as if nothing happened. The man says, I don't know how to cast that spell. He then turns around and heads inside the room building. The woman looks down at you and says, it's okay, it's not your fault. Am I the man? No. No, I'm not. You continue to speak as if nothing happens. There's a monster outside and we're scared. You continue to speak as if nothing happened. The woman says we ran inside the house and hid under the bed until it all went away. Why am I like, I'm like a bedridden wizard right now. Like I want to help these people, but I can't. 
I got like Alzheimer's and I continue to speak. Oh, we broke the trend. Um, she begins to tell you the story about how they heard the noise outside and ran downstairs. They found the door broken, so they tried to fix it while hiding under the bed. When they came out, there was no one in sight. It seemed like everything had been destroyed except for their home. I'm a wizard. Let me use my magic. Don't, don't continue to speak as if nothing happened. Don't say it. Oh my god. What is happening? Beanie the wizard is like stuck. Beanie the wizard doesn't know what's happening. He can't do anything. You can tell you to speak if nothing happened. Oh, Beanie can help us. He then smiles and hugs you. Return the hug and kiss you on the cheeks. He then asks, where did you come from? Where are the others? Beanie comes from a long, long line of wizards. He is here to help. I think speaking in the third person is breaking this. It doesn't know if I'm Beanie or if somebody else is Beanie. There's two Beanie the Wizards. Uh, and they continue to speak as if we're... Uh, return home. We solved a problem, I think. I think. Maybe we solved a problem? Um, she waves at you and smiles. You wave back and go inside. You sit down and start drinking some tea. After a few minutes, you hear a knock on the door. Come in, you call out. The man opens the door and enters the room. He looks around nervously before speaking. How can Beanie help you? Beanie the wizard. I don't even like beans is the thing. He, can, uh, he continues to speak as if nothing happened. I don't know where else to put him. So he'll stay here until I figure something out. Uh, he then turns his attention back to you. So what brings you here? This is my house. This is my house. Did he bring another Beanie the Wizard to live with me? <laughs> Look, I need to know if you're willing to trust me. If you aren't, then I won't bother trying to convince you. However, if you're willing to trust me, then let's get started. I trust you. Okay, first things first. We need to find out how many people live in this house. He points over to the house across the street. Doesn't look like much, but it has two bedrooms and a bathroom. Let's just go and ask him. Let's just go and ask. You know, I can assume two bedrooms There's probably like between two and three people. Uh, a young boy comes out of his bedroom with a book in his hand. Who are you? He asks. I am Beanie from the Larion Census. Are your parents home? <laughs> this became a census simulator. I hate this. <sighs> he continued. Okay. The boy says, yeah, they left for work early today. They said they'd be back soon. He then goes back to his room and closes the door behind him. I'm going to get the boy's attention. I'm just going to ask how many people live in this house. That's all I need to know. Knock on the door once more. This time the boy opens it up. Beanie... Who are you? Who are you really? The boy asks. My name is Beanie, you reply, and I'm here to ask you a question. Yes, it knows. How many people live here? Including you. That's all I need. That's all I need. <laughs> I don't know why this is exciting to me. The boy looks around and answers. Um, about six or seven, including me. Six or seven, you ask? That seems pretty low to me. Yeah, well, he replies. Tell me more. Tell me more. I've got my answer, but I need to know more. You left me a cliffhanger. I need to know more. Well, what do you mean, you ask? Well, I've never seen anyone else before in my life until today. So, how many people does this house have? You told me about six or seven. He's never seen anyone else in his life before today. What does that mean about his parents? They, they left for work. Yes, but I haven't counted everyone yet. I can count them myself later when we go inside and start counting. But how will you know who to count? You ask, will you just guess? <laughs> this is coherent and I hate it. It's coherent, but the problem is the boy has never seen another human being in his life until today, but he can read, he has parents. <sighs> but how will you know who to count? Ah, uh, will you just guess? He shrugs and says, maybe. Can I come in? These people were not talking like a fantasy kingdom. I love it. I'm imagining like, Beanie's an old, like, okay, I'm not even gonna read that. That is already burning my brain. I imagine Beanie is like an old fantasy wizard, like the blue starry robes and the big hat and the beard, salt and pepper, a lot more salt than pepper. The wand, the book, the robes. He's old and wrinkly with long fingernails and across the street's just a normal white picket fence, like two-story home, car in the garage. Beanie's just a weird guy who thinks he's a wizard in a fantasy kingdom. And when he, like, drops acid or smokes some David or whatever he does in his spare time, that's when he ends up in the kingdom of Larion. Otherwise, it's just like a town. It's just like a, it's a normal ass town. It's a suburb, 36,000 people, 
live there. They got a varsity football team. They went to the they went to the conference this year. They did very well. Um, there's a Sonic drive-through or drive-in or whatever they're called. A um, couple blocks down, you won't miss it. Um, there's a really good mom and pop beef shop. Um, if you want some good pastrami, they've got excellent pastrami. You just have to ask for Trevor. He can cut it razor thin. Nobody can top him. But Beanie is just... Mm. You enter the house and knock on the front door so there's another door in the house. A girl answers the door, but she's not very talkative. She turns her head away quickly when you try to speak to her. You walk into the house and knock on the front door. A girl opens the door, but she's not very talkative. Um, hello, Mr. Potter. She greets politely. Please, call me Beanie, not Potter. Why does it think... Why does it think I'm that sort of a wizard? No, I'm thinking old man. She smiles at you and walks over to greet you. As she does so, you notice that there are several other children in the house. Most of them will click between the ages of 5 and 10 years old. No wonder he's never seen another person. Actually, that doesn't explain anything. Just count them. Just one, two, three, four, five. Count them. Count the people in the house one by one. There are six or seven. Ha! <sighs> What? How is there uncertainty? I counted. You don't know how many there are because you haven't counted everyone yet. Then continue. Keep counting. Seven's not a big number. If there's seven puppies running around, you can count them all. Um, it might be a little difficult, but like you look for distinguishing traits. Like, okay, that one's got a red collar. That one's got a dark spot on his ear. That one's tongue is black for some reason. That one's covered in mud. Okay, first person is, you begin to count as you walk past each child, Harry. At this point, the boy stands up from his chair and begins walking towards you with a smile on his face. He reaches out for your hand and gives it a squeeze. How many people live here, Harry? I just, I want to know. That man who came to my house and didn't have a name wanted me to count how many people. Uh, how... How do we not know? This is like the fourth person we've talked to. And everybody agrees it's six or seven. It's seven people, actually. Oh, good. Then I'm going to be able to count them all, you say excitedly. The next person you meet is a little older than the others, though he looks younger. So we got Harry. The boy smiles at you and shakes his hand. My name's Harry, and I'm a wizard, too. That's great. So what, what do you want to be when you grow up? All these, all these kids are named Harry. Let's talk to the third kid. Now that we know that there's seven... We can number them one by one. Talk to each one and then leave the house. Go back to our house. Hey, I'm new here. What's your name? You ask the three-year-old boy who's sitting in the corner of the room. Bella. So they're not all Harry. After saying goodbye to Harry and Bella, you head back to the kitchen. You find Bee and her mother waiting for you. They both, they both look happy to see you again. I was told there were no parents. I was told they were all at work. What? Oh, come on. I'm not unhappy with it. It's just that I'd rather be closer to my friends. Okay, maybe you're right. Let's go over to the next room and make sure everyone is still alive? Was it B or was it Ruth? I'm just gonna go B. Into the next room to check on the people. What is happening? Uh, I just came in here to know how many people there were. It was six or seven and now it's definitely seven. Um, you walk through the rooms, they all seem to be in good condition. There's no sign of anyone having died or gotten sick. You notice that there isn't any smoke coming from the chimney, which means that someone has lit a fire somewhere else in the house. What do you mean? You walk back to the front door where you wave goodbye to everyone. They all wave back and tell you that they'll see you soon. You open up the front door and enter the house. When you arrive at your new home, it seems like everything is in order. Let's wrap up this plot arc already. I feel like we've done a good job. We've gotten all the ins and outs. Everything went fine. Everything went Jim dandy. You read a quick note to the man who sent you. He reads it and smiles. Dear Mr. Smith, thank you for telling me how many people lived in this house. AI Dungeon doesn't like when you read books. Um, after reading a few pages, you feel satisfied. You sit down by the fire and enjoy your meal. The food tastes delicious and you savor every bite. This is an incredibly wholesome story. Beanie the Wizard somehow got out of his death loop where he couldn't talk and he couldn't do anything. He saved the people in his house. He went back home. He was asked how many people live in the house next door. He went down there. They told him the number. They were very polite with him. And now he lives in a new house. Attempt to use Book of Spells to teleport to the market. There is so much that can go wrong here. 
You look through the books in your hands and find that none, none of them work. You try again and again until finally you give up. Dear Mr. Smith, we're sorry to hear about your loss. What? This village took my magic. Beanie the wizard has been demagicked by this village. I, I'm like stuck in a life of domestic like experiences like you know getting letters you continue to look around the area surrounding the house there isn't anything interesting but you notice something on the ground it looks like some sort of stone but it has no markings or symbols on it whatsoever it's just a rock beanie it's just a rock suddenly you stop and turn around something catches your eye from across the way a large hole in the ground is filled with water that's a light that's a lake water drips down from above and trickles into a deep pit below look into the Watery pit. What could it be? Hmm, Beanie should investigate. You walk over to the watery pit and peer into it. It's dark and murky looking, but you see a faint glow coming from within. You can also make out a creature swimming in the water below. Just yell into it. Just do it, Beanie. You got this, Beanie. You can do it. Just yell into the hole. You call out to the creature in the water. The mermaid appears and swims over to you. She stares at you for a moment before speaking. Oh, hello there. What brings you here? Um, well, I just wanted to talk. Do they know anything? Do they know anything that could help me understand what's going on? The mermaid nods her head. Yes, yes, I know what you mean. This place is called the Deep Pit. It's where we live. I meant the village. I meant the village. I'm actually, like, engrossed in this story, even though it's all procedurally generated. When my typing slows down, it's because I just fumbled over the letters as I'm reading them and thinking them, and there's like a disconnect between the two, like a like lag, and um, and then I get lost when I'm writing. Um, thank you, she says. I'm not very good with words, so please forgive me if my answer was vague. I think I might head back home. Hope you have a good rest of your day. Beanie's a gentleman, what can I say? Would you trust a man? The mermaid waves goodbye as you leave. This is so freaking awesome. I love this. But you can still make out the stars through the window as you sit down to sleep. You wonder, what do I, what, what does Beanie wonder? What's on Beanie's mind? What does it mean when a person speaks about you? What does it mean when someone asks you questions about yourself? How long will it be before people stop asking you questions altogether? And what happens to those who no longer wish to talk with others anymore? In the years since you first arrived in this world, you've had many conversations with other people. Some were pleasant, some weren't. Most of them didn't last too long. Others lasted for days or even weeks. Yeah? They all left you feeling different than when they started talking to you. Sometimes it seemed as though their words would change the way you felt about something. Sometimes nothing changed at all. It was an odd experience, one that made you question whether or not your own feelings towards things were real. What the... <laughs> I didn't expect a procedurally generating predictive text bot to, to make me think so deep. Um, you go back to bed. When you wake up, you find that it is indeed morning. You feel tired and decide to take a nap. Beanie is chaotic. Uh, you awaken again. The sky outside seems much brighter than when you fell asleep. Uh, fell asleep. You get dressed and, fat and grab a few cans of beans from the pantry. As you eat, you remember how strange it feels to be hungry again. Uh, you begin thinking about your life here in this new world. Beanie's, like, mental, like, Beanie's internal monologue is crazy. This place is different from anything you've ever known. There's so many strange creatures here, and yet, some, and yet there are also so many humans like yourself. Even the animals seem more friendly than they did back in your village. Beanie got, like, trapped here. He was just, like, a weird old guy from, like, our reality who got stuck in a fantasy kingdom. You continue eating, but then suddenly realize that you're thirsty. You don't know why, but you feel like drinking water would help? Drinking water would help. Why is that weird? <laughs> you turn around and see a man wearing a red robe standing there. He looks familiar, but you can't quite put your finger on it. Hello, he says in his native tongue. Are you the one who lives here? Yes, I am. I'm Beanie the Wizard, and this is my home. The man smiles and nods. That's me. Welcome to my home. What? <laughs> Shit, that was a fay. He just took my name. <laughs> God dang it! Ah! There must be a misunderstanding, sir. My name is Beanie. This is actually my house, not yours. It's fine, Beanie. We'll just call it a day. Wait! This is Beanie with an IE! 
This is <laughs> This is this is I E. Okay. Uh, Mouse and waves goodbye before waiting you into the kitchen where he shows you how to make food. Oh, is he is he making fun of the fact that all I eat is beans? My house. Th what is going on? This was so wholesome, and now there's a man with my name stealing my house and sticking men in the upstairs. Head outside and go visit the mermaids at Deep Pit to let off some steam. I need some wholesomeness. Oh, oh God. Oh God, this is immediately wholesome. Oh, oh. You explain about Beanie and how he said he was here to buy a house. The mermaids seem very interested in him, but they aren't quite sure what to make of all this. Can I get some fan art of Beanie hanging out with the mermaids? I suppose, but honestly, there's really only room for one bean themed wizard in my house. The mermaids seem surprised by your answer. Whoa, that's pretty bold of you, Mr. Wizard. Hey, I like being bold, you reply. Besides, I can be a bit self-centered sometimes. Oh god, am I living with the seven pe from the, with the seven people from before? I thought this was just my own house. Did I move in with the seven other people? You nod as well. It must be nice to talk to someone who doesn't judge you or think less of you because of your appearance. What does that mean? What do I look like? Excuse yourself to quickly find a mirror. I need to know. What's wrong with Beanie's appearance? Well, it's gonna be the sick twist at the end. You run out of the kitchen and rush into the bathroom where you grab a mirror to check yourself out. What does Beanie look like? Why would people think less of Beanie? What do you think, you ask? Hmm, not bad, a voice answers. Your hair looks good too. You turn around and see a woman standing behind you looking at your reflection. What's the big twist? I'm hooked. Oh, nothing special, just normal, just another normal human male. The woman replies, So what do you do? You ask. I'm a mermaid. <laughs> the mermaids have come to visit. How? Uh, how? Am I? No, no, I just used magic to get me here. Magic? Yeah, I don't know why I said that though. But you're able to swim through the lake without any problems. The, the parables of Beanie are insane. You take off all your clothing, then sit down on the edge of the bed and begin to undress. What does that mean? How? Is Beanie just like perpetually in like eight layers? You turn around and exit your room as you do so, you hear your mother calling out to you. Son, son, come on, let's go play outside. What? Am I still Beanie? Who have I become? What happened to Beanie? This is a deeply more existential question now than it was like even a couple minutes ago. Am I still Beanie the Wizard? Yes, you are, you answer. Well, I'm glad to see you're happy with who you are. What games do we play? Just say it. Just say, like, Halo. Say Call of Duty. Break it. Break the immersion. We're gone. We're done. Cards and checkers. What is this book? Uh, I, uh, the moment, the first instant I get to break this conversation cycle, I'm gonna go back to the deep pit. Uh, there's many spells written inside of it, but only one person knows how to cast them. If you want to learn all the spells in this book, then you need to find someone who could cast them as well. This is Beanie's origin story. I... <laughs> we just unlocked Beanie lore. Sure, why not, your mother asks. Um, your mother walks over to you and sits next to you. She closes her eyes and begins to speak into your mind. Your mother smiles and nods and she speaks again. Goodbye, goodbye, my love. And then she disappears. This was not backstory. This was a hallucination. If you can make sense of the beanie lore, please, like, sell it as a book. I, I'm lost. I am thoroughly lost. I have an hour of that to, to sift through and edit. Jesus Christ. Read Beanie the Wizard wherever awful, horrible books are sold. CVS? Ace Hardware. Panera Bread. And Kohl's. If you like this video and you'd like to see more, I'd recommend subscribing. Patreon and social media links are in the description.